10 years of scientific research has proven the age-old adage right. Apples really do keep the doctor away. Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the most well-known rumors, myths, or old wives' tales about health that have actually been scientifically verified. Just how much can the cold really give you a cold like some of our moms told us growing up? Number 10. Spinach makes you strong. If you grew up watching the series of cartoons based on the fictional character Popeye the Sailor Man, it probably left you with the idea that eating spinach will make you big and strong. After all, that was Popeye's saving grace against his arch nemesis, Bluto. But while your muscles may not puff up upon immediate consumption of the green fuel, it turns out that the sailor man wasn't too far off. And then how many cans of spinach you would need to actually get your recommended daily intake? Eight cans of spinach to get all your protein for the day? But only two cans of spinach for your daily intake of iron. Research has shown that spinach contains inorganic nitrates, which reduce oxygen demand and greatly improve muscle performance. It also contains ecdysterone, a chemical with bodybuilding properties, which is used in nutritional supplements marketed as enhancers of physical performance. It's a triple threat. It has potassium, magnesium, and folate. And what potassium does, it's sort of the anti-sodium. I just said that sodium draws in water. Right. Potassium flushes it out and flushes the sodium out. Number nine, chicken soup can cure your cold. For centuries, grandmothers worldwide have relied on a timeless remedy serving steamy bowls of chicken soup to their cold-addled grandchildren. But is this homemade dish a miracle in a bowl or merely a generational myth? A case of the sniffles often leads to a can of chicken noodle soup. It's no myth. Science leans towards the former. Although the evidence remains somewhat inconclusive, studies suggest that chicken contains a chemical called carnosine, which may combat inflammation in the upper respiratory tract. Like any soup, the warm liquid can soothe a sore throat. <laughs> there have been studies that show chicken noodle soup has a mild anti-inflammatory effect and can slow the spread of infection. Also, when the joint tissue in chicken bones is broken down, it releases certain compounds that repair our connective tissues, helping us quickly recover from an illness. While it may not be the miracle worker your grandma touts it as, it seems a bowl of chicken soup is one way to get you back on your feet faster. Mm. That is a perfect bowl of chicken noodle soup. Number eight, swallowed gum remains in your stomach. As a child, you were probably told that if you swallowed gum, it would remain in your system for seven years. This myth is largely false. The wad of chewing gum hits your stomach intact. Your saliva enzymes and your stomach acid can't touch the butyl in the gum base, but that doesn't mean it just hangs out. As gum can't be fully digested, it eventually passes out of your system, pretty much unchanged. However, there can be some truth to the tale. Sometimes gum can become stuck in the esophagus, posing a life-threatening risk if it blocks the airway. The more gum your body has to process, the higher likelihood that it will build up. Furthermore, when swallowed in large quantities, it can create what is known as a bezoar effect, which is the buildup of any material that can cause blockages in the gut. This may require surgical intervention. To stay safe, it's best to throw gum out when you're through with it. To be safe, when you've chewed through all the flavor and fun, put gum in the trash. Number seven, heartburn during pregnancy results in a hairy baby. Heartburn is a common occurrence during pregnancy, which is mostly attributed to hormonal changes. However, one old wives' tale has long suggested that it could be due to carrying a baby with a full head of hair. As hard as it may be to believe, your baby in studies, if you have a lot of heartburn, your baby has a greater chance of being born with lots of hair now. Certainly there's no way for a baby's hair to cross over into the mother's esophagus, so this has to be false, right? Well, according to a study by John Hopkins University, there actually is a connection between the two. The study found there is a correlation between severe heartburn and the hairiness of a newborn. Turns out, the same hormones causing acid reflux into the esophagus also stimulate hair growth in the fetus. Conversely, women who experience little to no heartburn during pregnancy often have babies with just as little hair on their heads. The hormone estrogen causes the valve at the top of your stomach to relax, which means those acids can flow up into your esophagus. But estrogen has also been linked to hair growth in a developing baby. Number six, eating late will make you gain weight. 
This rhyming statement is one that has left scientists conflicted for years. Some posit that a late-night meal could indeed disrupt your natural circadian rhythms and impair your body's ability to properly digest food. Now what do you do if you eat this late at night? What do you do? You go right to bed. So let's think about that. So if you're asleep, what is your metabolism doing too? It's, it's kind of in a very resting state. Others believe that a calorie is a calorie totally unaffected by the time it is consumed. Like many other theories, a consensus within the scientific community remains elusive. However, one tightly controlled 2022 study seemed to provide some clarity. Those massive spikes increase your insulin, and if your body doesn't need all that glucose, what it does is the insulin literally tells your body to store it as fat. It showed that late eating significantly increased hunger levels in the morning and prompted storage of fat in the body while decreasing its breakdown. It's best to stop eating three hours before bedtime. And if you do need a snack, make it a small, easily digestible one, like a banana or a protein smoothie. This suggests that taking that midnight snack could indeed be contributing to weight gain. Number five, drink six to eight glasses of water a day. You've probably heard that you need to drink between six to eight glasses of water every day for your body to function optimally. But believe it or not, your size and metabolism also plays a role. You'll need more water if you weigh 250 pounds versus someone who weighs 150 pounds. And if you have a fast metabolism, you'll also need more water than... This recommendation may seem ridiculous to some and reasonable to others, but it appears to lean more towards fact than fiction. In reality, when it comes to fluid intake, there is no universal formula because our individual water needs vary depending on multiple factors. It's important not to rely on thirst alone. What I recommend is that you check your urine. You want it to be almost clear. That said, the adequate daily fluid intake for adults falls within the range of 2.7 to 3.7 liters. While some of that liquid comes from other beverages, fruits, and vegetables, taking a few additional glasses of water could also help you flush out toxins and keep you properly hydrated. You can also get some of your water volume through food. All of these fruits and vegetables right here are at least 90% water. That actually helps you stay fuller longer and staying hydrated also just keeps your metabolism at its max. Number four, exercise makes you smarter. Hitting the gym offers numerous benefits. It can make you stronger, increase muscle mass, and help burn fat. Our bodies are hardwired for movement. Early man had to move to survive. Now exercise drives our desire to stay fit. But scientists say there is one lesser known advantage to working out. It can boost your intelligence. One Canadian study demonstrated that regular exercise significantly improves brain function, mental stamina, and memory. So the ability to concentrate on a specific task. Another one is flexibility, so the ability to change one's concentration from one task to another. The ability to make quick decisions, and that also improved uh, after the training. Not only does it sharpen cognitive skills, it can also help preserve brain health as you get older. Another study involving older people in Germany found that those who didn't engage in mild exercise regularly were twice as likely to experience cognitive decline. Our brain circuitry improves. It creates an environment for brain cells to grow. We can learn better, we can remember better, we can be more creative. This is thought to occur because exercise increases blood and oxygen flow to the brain and may potentially foster the growth of neurons. Number three. Going out in the cold will give you a cold. Like some of the other entries on this list, this long-standing myth may not be true in its entirety. When you think of cold, it's hard not to mix it with getting sick. After all, where did the common cold get its name? Hmm. But it's also not completely baseless. Influenza viruses, not the cold itself, are the true culprits behind the flu. However, frigid conditions play a role by fostering a conductive environment for viral transmission and survival. These viruses tend to spread easier, they thrive, they love that cold, dry air. Indeed, the viruses replicate faster and are able to remain viable for much longer in colder temperatures. To make things worse, chilly air could significantly weaken the immune response in the respiratory tract, rendering us more susceptible to infection. So perhaps your mom was onto something when she insisted you bundle up before heading out of the house. But as the weather turns cold and we spend more time inside in close contact with other people, experts recommend washing your hands often, covering your mouth when you cough, and getting a flu shot as a precaution. Number two, you can catch up on sleep over the weekend. Many people believe that if they lose sleep during the weekdays, they can just make up for it by snoozing longer on the weekends. Usually I catch up on the weekend. You're so tired, you need it. But on weekends, I do like to 
stay and get a little extra shut-eye. For a long time, that claim has been disputed, but a 2018 Swedish study seems to confirm its validity. The study found that participants who slept for five hours or less every night faced a higher risk of premature death than those who slept for one or two hours more. However, this increased risk was largely mitigated when they compensated with extended weekend rest. To get enough sleep each night of the work week, set aside enough time to sleep. That's seven to nine hours uninterrupted. Wind down before bed by avoiding stress and light exposure. While aiming for seven hours of slumber remains ideal, this study proves that it is possible to pay off your sleep debt one weekend at a time. The preferred way to catch up on sleep is to go to bed a little earlier. The quality of sleep that you get that late in the morning is not as good as the quality of sleep that you can get when you go to bed earlier. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into settings and switch on your notifications. Number one, an apple a day keeps the doctor away. You've most likely heard this saying at least a thousand times since you were born. It first originated in the 19th century and has only grown increasingly popular since. But just how true is it? But experts say it doesn't necessarily cut down on trips to the doctor. Still, apples do have a lot of benefits. While a daily intake of apples may not totally shield you from disease, they pack essential nutrients like fiber, vitamins, and antioxidants, all of which contribute to several health benefits. Dietitians agree that the fiber in an apple can contribute to reducing blood pressure and cholesterol levels, which are both factors that can lead to heart disease. Studies have shown that the popular fruits promote cardiovascular health and can protect against diabetes by lowering blood sugar levels. Moreover, apples also reduce the risk of cancer in people who consume at least one every day. But you've got to eat the whole apple. It's in the skin where the goodness lies. And the darker the skin, the greater the benefits. It may not guarantee perfect health, but an apple a day sure can keep sickness at bay. What other health myths do you think have some truth to them? Let us know in the comments. Isn't that great? Yes. A little bonus. <laughs> Did you enjoy this video? Check out these other clips from WatchMojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.